The Republican leadership's non-proposal is extremely, extremely disappointing. Probably the most disappointing moment of this entire legislative session for me because of the expectations they raised yesterday that they were going to make a significantly improved offer to meet me halfway and resolve this budget deficit in a fair and balanced way and instead they repeated the same $34 billion that they've been uh, intransigently stuck on for the last several months and they modified some of the uh, pieces within that which is basically rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic and yet there's no improvement in terms of the overall budget that they're proposing and once again their position implicitly is I have to agree entirely to them I have to I have to give up 100 percent of everything I believe in and am convinced is right for the people of Minnesota and get, cave into their offer uh, or there's not going to be an agreement and it's just uh, it's it's so irresponsible and so uh, against the best interest of the people of Minnesota and I, I continue to be amazed that, that not raising taxes on the top 2% of Minnesota's income earners are, is more important to the Republican leadership and their caucuses than shutting down state government or cutting human services and throwing people off health care and raising tuitions and denying people special education funding. Uh, it's just a, a really a disappointing set of priorities. I to respond to questions. I don't know. I, I, I really don't. I, 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 this is the most discouraged I've been because the time is short. We've got two weeks left. I thought they were going to come back, back today with a, a real offer. I, you know, again, they were at 34 billion, and my last budget uh, was 37.6 billion. And uh, despite all the, you know, it's like taking the same. Uh, package and putting an, an, a different ribbon on it and pre presenting it as something else. It's just, it's not that. So they haven't come up a single dollar. I've come down 1.8 billion. And their position is, well, you know, you've got to come down the other 1.8 billion in order for us to meet. What do you think about this deadline? Is that insult to injury? I mean, they, the offer can expire. It's not worth anything. It's got a little bit of improvement f for higher education, I'm glad of that. I mean, it's got an early childhood mission, so I, I should say it's not worth anything. I'll retract that, but it's worth, in, relative, to, relative to the overall uh, scope of $1.8 billion, it's, it's really insignificant. So they want to expire the offer, they're welcome to do so. So the next one is yours. Have you considered at all bringing something forward that's just different than your income tax plan, just to sort of shake up the dynamic here? Some new revenue that, that perhaps they could spin as not a tax increase? Well, I, I think it's th uh, their responsibility to identify the revenue that they would posit as an alternative to my tax revenues. I'm quite satisfied with my approach. It only raises taxes on the wealthiest 2% of Minnesotans and does not raise a single dollar of income taxes or any property taxes on the other 98% of Minnesotans. If they have a better idea, then it's incumbent on them to come forward as part of their willingness to r raise $1.8 billion of additional revenue so that we can meet in the middle. What I, what I you know, was planning and preparing to do was to be more specific about the reductions that I'd be willing to ex agree to, even if I don't agree with them, in, in expenditures in order to get down to the 35.8. But that seems rather pointless in light of the, their stance today that I told them, you know, if you want me to match your offer, I'll, I'll just send you my March budget because you haven't come up a dollar. So I'll just stay right at 37.6. You can have all the detail you want. It's all there in my uh, revised budget. Governor, Governor, if Republicans are calling this their biggest move in budget negotiations, what does this portend for a shutdown? I mean, <laughs> If this is the biggest move they're going to make, as I say, I mean, just look at the bottom line. I mean, it's, they're at 34 billion. They started at 34 billion. They're still at 34 billion. You know, they, they, it, it, the rest of this becomes a public relations uh, ploy just to try to, you know, make them look less unreasonable in the public's mind. But the the facts, you know, you can only sugarcoat 
you know, bad news for so long, and the fact is they're not willing to, to budge one dollar from the, the overall you know, budget for the next two years. And that's what this all comes down to. It, I mean, we can rearrange how the you know, dollars are spent, uh, and there's some worthwhile discussions to have doing that, but the bottom line is they haven't budged a one dollar, and I've come down 1.8 billion, or offered to do so, and now they want me to come down another 1.8 billion, and it's, it's not gonna happen. Governor, do you think that they want to see a, a government shutdown on July 1st? What's that? Do you think that the Republican leaders want to see a government I, shutdown? I can't speak for them. I, I hope not. Uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, I mean, I don't see, my mother taught me actions speak louder than words. I don't see actions that indicate that they want to avoid a shutdown because the action would be to propose a, a real compromise and to identify additional revenues and if there as an alternative to mine but express a willingness to meet me halfway between our two budget numbers and they won't not only meet halfway they won't budge off the their goal line so you know they again would require me to go all the way over to their budget to, to give up everything that I know is important for the future of this state so is that <laughs> giving you Monday is that doesn't make any difference then. I mean We'll certainly continue discussions, and, but I can't even say I don't consider today a negotiation because they didn't offer anything that was uh, one, dip, one dollar different from their, their overall bottom line. They rearranged some numbers, and I will say that I think this is a slight improvement because it takes money from tax relief for corporations and wealthy individuals and puts it into higher education, early childhood education. So, that, you know, that's positive, but it's just, again, rearranging the chairs on the deck of the Titanic because uh, they're just keeping us headed toward that, that iceberg, which is a July 1st shutdown. And, you know, uh, they're not willing to deviate one inch from their course. Uh, it's just not, you know, it doesn't add up. Doug, when you're in the meeting with them, did you talk to them the same way as you would come out and talk to us here? You know, I told them I was extremely disappointed. I told them that I, you know, didn't consider it to be an offer, I uh, considered it to be not what I had led to expect, and I, that uh, you know, if they wanted uh, me to match their offer on m next Monday, I, I'll just send them my my March budget because you know, if, if they're not going to move a dollar, then you know, I don't want to get into that kind of mode. But that's you know, that, I mean, that, that would satisfy their their desire for for budget detail. Now, the gambling revenue was still out there as a possible compromise point, but no, neither side seems to ever want to bring it up. But you say they got to come forward with revenue, and, and, and so you won't bring it forward. That is still out there. It's what a lot of people are talking about as a potential compromise point. Why is, why is no one in these negotiations talking about that? Uh, well, I, I hear a lot of things that people are supposedly talking about, including Republican members on the revenue side, and yet nobody is, is willing to come forward on uh, Racino or any other uh, gaming proposal or any other tax or non-tax uh, revenue increase and I, I think a lot of people are cowed evidently by this sort of this doctrinaire uh, uh, ideology uh, very rigid that says you know we toe the toe the party line here and not one more dollar above 34 billion in which case the additional revenues are not necessary and anybody who proposes additional revenues is going to be uh, targeted uh, in the next year by uh, uh, you know a Republican uh, primary opponent and loss of committee positions, whatever else is is out there. But you know the, there's no shortage of ideas that I've heard about uh, that people have expressed to me privately or expressed to people on my staff privately. But nobody is willing to come forward with anything that's a, a, a revenue alternative. You said that you, would be, you were thinking that you would be willing to come forward with the list of the 1.8 billion in cuts that you have yet to delineate. What, what's on that list? Well, if I were to tell you, then I would have come forward with it. So, uh, but it's one, it's one, it's 1.8 billion in cuts that you haven't identified for Minnesotans. So, how are they supposed to judge your budget? Well, because I'm in a negotiation here, and, and you know, I, I'm not ruling out doing that. I, I was actually planning on it, and as I say, I've got to take stock in light of what was an extremely disappointing non-offer of it, it showing no movement whatsoever. And I don't know why it's even necessary to meet to have somebody just reiterate that they're locked into the same position as before. 
Governor, isn't it reasonable for the Republican leaders to expect to, to know what your $1.8 billion in cuts are and where the $1.8 billion in tax increases might be distributed? It's reasonable if they're willing to be reasonable on their side of the, the equation, which is that they would indicate where they would be agreeable to a, an additional $1.8 billion in revenues. And I've offered to you know, swap paper with them. I've offered to match them dollar for dollar. I've, I've offered a mediator. I've offered, you know, I mean, I've offered everything I can think of to say, you know, let's meet in the responsible, balanced, fair middle ground. And, and every time I just get back 34 billion, 34 billion, show us all, all your numbers, but we're not gonna change uh, any of ours. And, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna start negotiating with people who won't negotiate with me. But you have repeatedly Criticize the Republicans' previous budget for not being able to compare it apples to apples with yours because they didn't provide the details that you said were real. You're now not providing details. Well, I, I have details of my $37.6 billion budget. It's the, it's the budget I submitted uh, with the, after the revised budget forecast. It's got all, all the detail, more detail than in, in their $34 billion budget. They didn't provide any more detail today except a couple of items where they said they were going to you know, increase some funding and then they're going to back off their tax reductions, so that's about 150 million of which is budgeted as spending. So, you know, it, it, if you, you know negotiations and you're $10,000 apart and you say to the person, I'll give you 20, 20 more over here, but I'm gonna take away 20 more over there. You know, is that, is that a, a responsible, reasonable negotiation in the context of that kind of difference? No, and that's what, you know, that's the game that, that's being played here. Yeah, is, you know, we are 1.8 1. or 3.6 billion dollars apart, and they want to talk about 10 million here and 20 million there, which is going to be offset uh, internally within their budget, and they want to call that significant. It's not significant at all. Significant is meeting in the middle. Significant is 35.8 billion dollars. I come down 1.8 billion. They come up 1.8 billion. That's responsible negotiations. So back to Rachel's question. Where do you go from here? Do you wait for them to call you now? Do you invite them in? No, I'm, you invite I, them in. What do you talk about? I mean, I you know I'm I'm going to think about that. Uh, I I don't I can't say right now what I'm going to do because again I was optimistic that we would have something very different presented to us today and on that basis I've had meetings this morning to talk about how we uh, present further details about the budget that I'm willing to agree to, even though I don't entirely agree with it. And I, I just have to reconsider that now in light of what, what's a complete non-offer. Governor, your thoughts on the passing of Senator Linda Schein? Uh, you know, I, I served uh, three different decades with, with uh, Senator Scheid, and, and she's just a, a wonderful, wonderful person. I don't know of anybody in legislature or anybody in state government who didn't love her and, and respect her and she, she always did what she believed was right for the people she was serving and she followed her own path and I was really enjoyed about two weeks ago having her and her family and a couple of her close friends over for lunch at the residence and you know even though she was in a wheelchair and obviously time was short she was still in good spirits and very very alert very aware of what was going on and very happy to pass the Surly bill and uh, I told her how much my staff appreciated her doing so. <laughs> Governor, um, several Republicans have called on you to call a full special session just to, to uh, pass a transportation bill that, that uses the dedicated money, the gas tax money, and those things. Are you willing to do that? I know I've said I'm not going to agree to anything until I agree to everything. And I'm not going to bring them back here to waste taxpayer dollars on per diems and until they're prepared to be responsible and, and meet me in, in, with middle ground. And whenever they're willing to do that, then we'll set up a special session. Governor, the other thing that they've uh, discussed is that they're concerned that road construction could be stalled, but Central Corridor construction there could continue. Is Central Corridor going to continue under your proposal? You know, it's, it's a good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to look and see. It's, it's you know, the, with the federal Funds, I'm, I'm not aware of. Huh? Should it continue? I, I'd have to think about that. I let me talk to Commissioner Scholder. I'll get back to you on that. I don't know whether it's included or not. Governor, in your meeting, uh, did you discuss the possibility of bringing in a court appointed mediator with the Republic? I didn't bring it up. I you know, brought it up before and it's been rejected. It was in my request for the uh, 
but you know that's something I'll consider re, you know, as part of my next response. Time for one last question. It just seems like you're in a stalemate that has no solution right now. You're the governor. How are you going to keep your state from shutting down? Well, the only option that's been presented to me is to agree to a $34 billion budget for the next biennium. I mean, it takes two to tango. It takes two to reach an agreement. And the only, you know, option that the other side is willing to agree to is for me to give in entirely to their position, which I'm not willing to do. I continue to say I'll meet you in the middle. I'll compromise. I'll accept things that I don't like. You need to accept things that you don't like. They, they won't budge one dollar from whatever they, you know, believe is, is right for Minnesota. They, they, they're entitled to believe that. I have my different beliefs, and we've got to find some way we can meet in the middle. And that means compromise, and they're just totally unwilling to. And I'm unwilling to concede entirely to their position. So, yes, we are at an impasse. Thank you very much.